Hey, what's up, guys? Joker here, and I am joined by Keith, the U.S. hardware editor for WCCFTech.com, and we're going to be discussing the announcement that we got from NVIDIA last night on the Pascal architecture for the GTX 1080 and 1070, as well as speculating a bit about Polaris, which we don't have as much information about yet, but we are going to talk about it. So uh, after seeing the, the press conference last night, what was your initial take on just seeing the, um, you know, the numbers here for the 1080 and the 1070 and, and at that price point as well? Well, the 1080 really got my attention in the fact that we do have GDDR 5X and the clock rates that those cards are able to run up to on the TDP that they're rated at. Not to mention that cooler actually ended up looking a lot better in person than it did in some of the things I've seen leading up to it. Um, the 1070, honestly, the price has really got my attention. It's, I mean, it's just over 50% cost of the uh, the 1080, and it's still got eight gigs of uh, GDDR5, not the 5X, but still, pretty impressive stuff we're looking at. Yeah, for, for $379, I mean, they're launching like at the same prices that we saw at Maxwell cards, which I mean, I guess, you know, we should always expect that's kind of like what their launch prices are. But every time we, you know, with, with this with this go around, I think this is probably like one of the biggest generational jumps that they have made in like a really long time since at least uh, probably since they went from uh, to the GTX lineup, I would say. Yeah, and a lot of people, I, in, myself included, was expecting the the 1080 to be closer to seven hundred dollars the the yeah. 599 price point kind of kind of threw yeah, me that, off and yeah yeah it was it, it, it is, is a good price point and it's you know it still remains to be seen how close the 1070 is going to be able to get to it in terms of performance because you know initially when at launch like you know when the 980 and 970 came out i was like oh yeah 980 is you know going to be way better no, no doubt about it but as we started to see like you know i guess even kind of recently towards the end of the life cycle of Maxwell, um, you know, the 970 kind of closed that gap a little bit. And I think in a lot of people's minds, myself included, when, I, when I'm testing a single card and I could see how well it was even handling like 1440p resolution on a sub $400 card, you know, seeing these cards come out now, it's like, man, are people going to actually be able to get cards for sub $400 that can handle 4K? Yeah, you know, that, that's been something that... I was curious about myself because, like you said, the 970, once you heavily overclocked it, it could keep up with the 980 pretty closely. Yeah. But I think NVIDIA was pretty smart this go around. And by the different, even with just the memory differentiating them, there's mm -hmm. a big difference between a, a 1070 and a 1080, Absolutely. unlike last time. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that's like, oh, is it really 7.5 gigs? <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be I don't think issue. that'll happen. I don't think that'll happen ever again. I don't ever. either. But, no. but it is, it's going to be interesting to see the difference between the two's performance because of the memory. Like how much of a difference is that GDDR 5X really going to play into that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're talking about DDR five X being about one point seven times faster than DDR five. So yeah, I mean, that's that. I mean, you know, it's not quite double, but it's it's still better. It's not HBM, you know, two numbers or HBM one numbers even, but it's still better. And it's going. To, I think it's going to bring a big a performance improvement, at least for the higher resolutions. So I'll still. I'm going to be interested to see how the 1070 does. Uh, you know, handle the higher resolutions, 4K, ultra wide gaming, and multiple monitors, and VR even. Um, and I think the 1070 is actually going to be a pretty attractive card, at least for uh, you know, kind of like the entry level on on VR. Yes, I think that, and they seem to be hitting VR pretty hard this time with yeah. the um, the display technology that they've got going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were making they were definitely making a big push on VR and. Uh, at the Acer event that I was at recently in New York, I could definitely see when I was there that that was a really big push that they were making as well. They were putting out new laptops where they were talking about, okay, these are not just gaming laptops, they're la gaming laptops that we're making to drive virtual reality. And they had NVIDIA was there, they had like, all the VRs there to try out with all of these things. So it seems like NVIDIA is definitely making a big push for VR, um, which, I, I, which I kind of expected. And it looks like AMD might be... Uh, you know, making a, a con, you know a contender in that arena as well. We've seen some early information here about Polaris, and I saw a video actually earlier today from Digital Foundry that was talking about this. That the Polaris architecture seems like it's actually shaping up to be a little bit more geared towards the entry level VR performance as opposed to actually just going out full head on with Nvidia with their top end cards, or even trying to take over their own Fury and Fury X cards, which I thought was a really interesting point. And we've you know we've seen some. Uh, information about that and their marketing they 
are trying to go after the um, the kind of more affordable VR market. Um, what would your take on that be with with Polaris and? It, my, personally, I, th I think it's going to be a very interesting point because what we're looking at, if that's the case, and what they're doing is targeting that entry-level uh, mm -hmm. VR, we can look at what's currently consider considered um, entry-level for VR, which is the 970 and the 390. So right. if, if they're going to target that performance level, or even a bit better, but they're going to be doing it on the new you know, 14 nanometer for the AMD cards, and we haven't gotten a lot of the details on what exactly is new in their fourth generation's GCN, but they, they seem to be changing a lot. They keep the, It looks like they're keeping the same structure, but they're changing the way it's, it all works in there while they're making the transistor move. Um, it look, it's going to be really interesting because it looks like they're targeting two completely separate markets this go around. Yeah. And... It, it's going to be interesting, especially from a reviewer standpoint, is how do you compare them? You yeah, definitely. I mean, they're talking about on the fourth gen GCN, they're talking about um, uh, better instruction, uh, prefetch, improved shader efficiency, memory compression. But those are all pretty, you know, it's pretty broad. It's, I'm still going to be interested to see how it actually, uh, you know, takes hold on the 14 nanometer process. They're talking about it being more power efficient. NVIDIA is going after, after the same thing. It seems like NVIDIA and AMD are kind of both targeting the same things, but they're going about it in different ways. Yeah, it really does, and different levels of it. Yeah, definitely, you know? dif definitely different levels. But the 1070 is still going to be really competitive. And based on you know previously what I've seen Nvidia doing, it kind of makes me think that they know exactly what AMD is going to be putting out, and probably know exactly <laughs> what price point it's going to be at. And they're basically they're scheduling their stuff to be just that much better. Which we we saw it in Kepler, we saw it in Maxwell, and you know it's. It's unfortunate, and it's probably why you've seen NVIDIA sales go up so much, is because a lot of people just look at the graphs and the benchmarks, and they say, okay, well, this one's higher, so I'm going to get that, which what we were talking about earlier is, are people really going to take the bait on getting the more affordable VR option with AMD, the better price-to-performance ratio, or are they just going to say, no, I don't care about that, I just want whatever's the best that I can afford right now? Yeah. Well, here, here's a scenario, and I, I'd like to hear your take on this. If sure. um. If you had the two cards, let's let's just say for argument's sake, uh, the 490 comes out, and they keep the sort of same same number structure as they've got now, where mm -hmm. the the 490 will target say the 1070s performance. Um, let's say it comes in about the same, because right now the th the 390 runs about what 330, 300 to 330. Yeah, depending. Yeah, depending on which one you get. Yeah, around there. Yeah, I'm wondering if that, and I know we're splitting, almost splitting uh, atoms here, but the difference between 14 and 16 yeah. nanometer, how much that's going to play into their efficiency. Definitely. I'm curious to see that as well. Yeah, what if they come out and they perform almost identically? Then uh, if, if the 1070 and the 490 you're saying? Yeah. Well, if they're if they're performing um, almost identically in just you know core performance, I would have to see you know how much memory are is the uh, is it going to have? I'm assuming probably eight gigabytes again if they come around with the yeah. same DDR5. It's probably going to be eight gigabytes. So if they're performing the same, I guess then I would probably start to look at things like async compute and which who's winning there. Nvidia is making some advancements in that arena, but I still don't think they're going to beat AMD by a long shot. And as far as testing is concerned, I'm still planning to get in a Polaris card um, or two. I want to get in Polaris cards, I want to have Pascal cards, and I want to test both of them on async compute, DX12, Vulcan, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And and that was that's kind of what I was leading into is that right now there seems to be so many unknowns when it comes to DX12. Like for one, it's really hard to test right now outside of an in-game benchmark. So if you were to set up a um, like a, a a benchmark course for a game that doesn't have an in-game benchmark, and with the frame rate limits that the DX12's seeing with a lot of titles, it's it's so hard to to say who's going to come out on top this next go around. And, uh, and and also, I would say DX12 is not off to a great start, given that it's on all of these Windows exclusive titles on that on that store. It's just it's not really giving it a good name right now. And also, we we I've talked about how it could possibly mess things up for Nvidia because they have so much proprietary tech, and the the Windows Store is looking to kind of put. Um, you know, a foothold on all of that because they want everything to be theirs. And yesterday we saw, or was this, no, this was today actually, um, you guys posted an article on Doom running at 200 FPS on Vulkan, and NVIDIA is, you know, showing off Vulkan on their new GPUs. So are they, do you think maybe they're going to turn around and try to make a, 
bigger push on Vulcan uh, versus DirectX 12 because maybe that'll allow them to keep some of their proprietary stuff if they're worried about that? It, you know, it's highly likely. And the only reason I say that is because they, NVIDIA was first to market with a Vulcan driver. You know, they, yep, were, they were pretty proud about that. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be something. They seem, if, if you've noticed, and I'm sure you have, whenever it comes to these next generation uh, driver, the APIs, NVIDIA seems to be pretty focused on the um, the Vulcan API. Yeah, they've been they've been talking a lot recently about Vulcan and open source, um, mm -hmm. making some of their GameWorks features available open source, which is completely a 180 from what they were doing before, which is keeping everything close to the chest. And yeah, now, and now they're being like these big proponents for open source, and a lot of me, you know, saw that and was just like, oh, they're just doing that for PR standpoint. They just want to, you know, ap appeal to the open source crowd now be after they've been snuffing them for so long, and so. I was like, oh, it's just that. But now it seems like, no, they're actually making a big push with Vulcan. Yeah, and didn't they say that their VR works was going open source? Uh, I don't recall I, the exact specifics, but I think that that sounds familiar, actually. I wouldn't yeah, doubt it. I, I would encourage uh, <laughs> the audience to, to look into that a little more. And, yeah. But but I believe that's what they said, because I kind of had to pick my jaw up off the floor after I heard it. Yeah. Um, so... Last thing, uh, we did see some numbers NVIDIA had actually posted over on the site as far as just basic performance numbers where they were talking about um, VR, The Witcher 3, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and someone actually went and looked through the page info over on that actual post <laughs> and was able to find some some numbers where you could do some math and you could figure out some loose percentages to kind of figure out how much better those titles may be on a 1080 versus a GTX 980. And the numbers showed The Witcher 3 um, was performing about 70% better, 80% better on Rise of the Tomb Raider on the 1080 versus the 980, which is a massive leap, but not quite the... Uh, it's Well, I guess they were talking about 980s in SLI. I would guess a 70% to 80% improvement would probably be about 980 SLI numbers. You'd hope to get that on a, on a good day. So if a 1080 could do that on a single GPU... I think that's going to be really, really impressive. Yeah, and and you com when you combine the new GDDR five X with those insane yes. two gigahertz, two point two even <laughs> on air, yeah, on a on, reference on air cooler. and not even getting really hot either. Yeah, and and going to the memory, I just I pulled up some numbers to take a quick look at it. According to this mm -hmm. article, they're showing the um, the ten eighty having around three hundred thirty six uh, yeah. gigabytes per second of bandwidth. It's insane. And to put that in perspective, the 980 was only at 224, mm. but the 980 Ti is at 336. So you're looking at bandwidth matching the 980 Ti on the non-Ti class uh, GPU. Yeah, and you know, if if AMD was you know looking to maybe take out their Fury and Fury X cards, I would say that Nvidia is probably just doing this so that they can lay dormant and then push out Ti's as soon as Polaris comes to comes to uh, comes to head, but. It looks like if, if they stick with what we're talking about with trying to be at the entry level of VR, it looks like that pr might not even be necessary. And based on what I've seen in the past, that I, it doesn't really worry me as an NVIDIA user, but it seems like they've never been too much to try to overdo it on as far as beating AMD. They just kind of want to beat them by a little bit and like just kind of stay ahead of them. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like when you're running away from the bear and there's someone next to you. It's like, <laughs> I don't have to run faster than the bear. I just got to run faster than you. Exactly. Now, that leads me into the next thing. Big Pascal and Vega 10 next year. Yeah. I think that's where the real yes. like bloodbath and fist fight's going to go down. Absolutely. I mean, when I look at this right now, this kind of reminds me of what we saw with the 600 and 700 series with Kepler. We kind of we kind of got like the like the water uh we kind of got the watered down Kepler and then we got full Kepler on the next generation. So do you think that maybe they're lining that up for this time around? Whereas, you know, maybe this time next year, we'll see the full fat Pascal chip with HBM2. Because that's yes. what it's looking like to me. That's going to shape up for what's that, happening here. That That's what I anticipate. And and that goes for um, the, the Radeon side, too. Like, I I anticipate. H yeah, everyone's kind of waiting on HBM2 here. It's like, it's almost like these cards we're getting this year are kind of like a filler until yeah. next year, the full, the full cards. But... Based on the filler that we're getting, it seems like the 1080 and 1070 are ahead right now. And I know, you know, people are going to say, oh, he's just an NVIDIA fanboy. It's like, no, I want, you know, AMD to come out swinging there. You know, they've been struggling um, kind of in, in the stock market. They're losing a lot of money. I'm still waiting to see Zen uh, come out. And I'm hoping to do a Zen build like a Polaris, art, you know, card. I'm, I really want to see them do good uh, this time around. But if they're just, you know, if they're just targeting that um, 
entry level VR market, then I, I hope that their plan works out for them. I hope that that, yeah. that people will buy into that. I'm well, sure they can. I'm sure they can do it, but I just hope people are. That's what people actually want because they're putting a lot of eggs in that basket if they're thinking people want that. Yeah, and and you've probably noticed it too through social media and other stuff. They've been, they've gotten really chummy with OEMs with uh, system integrators. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, I think that's probably we're seeing like things with the laptops now. Even whereas previously it was like almost all Nvidia seen on the laptops, but then now they're making the push with Polaris Eleven, which will be geared towards mm -hmm. more the AIO uh, all-in-one computers and laptops. Yeah, and if they're able to help work with these, um, the the system integrators and get these lower cost and but still VR capable, that makes those vendors able to put VR ready on their desktop that they're selling at Best Buy and Absolutely. all of these other stores. So that could yeah. that could help them in a in an area that as Definitely. a as an enthusiast gamer we may not be looking at. Absolutely. Yeah, actually that that's a that's a very good point because I mean, you know, they've like they're they're in they're in consoles, you know, that's something that we don't really see, you know, as as enthusiast PC people that are, you know, we're building computers and stuff like that and always just trying to get the most performance that we possibly can. But that isn't always the you know the goal of you know a desktop computer that you're going to pick up in a store or even online like a pre-built system. So that's actually that's a really good point actually, and they could definitely make a lot of money in that area if that's what um, you know stores are looking to market. And with Be we just saw Best Buy is going to be carrying the Oculus Rift pretty soon, even before people are getting all their pre-order <laughs> units. So yeah, um, it would make a lot of sense if they want to have a desktop on the shelf that's uh, VR ready. It's yeah, it's that's a really good point actually. I'll be interested to see um, you know how it shakes up. Um, NVIDIA uh, has given a, lo a lot to think about, I think, uh, and it's only just a few weeks away until we get the uh, the 1080 and 1070. So uh, before we get out of here real quick, if you had to choose right now, what, which graphics card are you getting? Me? Yeah. If, you, if, you're if you're buying a graphics card this year, what graphics card are you buying? If it, if it was my personal money putting down, I would probably go for the 1070. You would go for the 1070? I would just want... One? Just yeah, one? Just one. I've... Me and... I, I'm, I'm a single card guy. Gotcha. Um, I would go for one and hope that I hadn't wished I'd gone for the 1080. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we'll see, man. I mean, a lot of people like last year around, it was the other way around with the 980s and 970s. Like people with 980s were like, man, I shouldn't have spent this much money for it. You know, for the, the 970s doing as good as they are. Uh, personally, I'm in the mindset I'm going to get the 1080 and I'm planning to get two 1080s, but... I don't know, because as, as someone who plays at like 1440, 144 hertz, but I've recently switched over to a 4K monitor, so if, if one 1080 could handle 1440, 144 hertz, you know, max settings, which it sounds like it probably could, especially with the DDR5X in there, that would probably make me like, I would be like, man, I'll just go with a single GPU for this and I'll be good to go. But I have a feeling that for 4K, I'll still probably need two cards if I wanted to drive that. Yeah, and, and to, to reiterate, the part of the reason why is... While you game at 1440p at 144 hertz, I'm at 1080p 144 hertz. Yep. So that makes a lot, that makes a lot of sense. In the ten, and I think that for that for 1080p for 144 hertz, I think that 1070 is going to kill it. I think it's even going to kill it at 1440p. Um, you know, 60 hertz plus gaming. Maybe oh, not yeah. everything maxed out in anti-aliasing and all that stuff, but I think it's still going to be a really good 1440p card and maybe even entry level 4K possibly if you're talking about like SLI. I would say. Oh yeah, I'd love to give it a shot. Yeah, it's 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 going to be good. I'm um, looking forward to it. But I'm going to go. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, thank you, Keith, for joining us. Uh, you guys can check him out uh, over at wccftech.com. Always posting all those hardware articles and stuff. I'll put the link down in the description below, and we will catch you guys next time.